Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Finds 86, I believe. Um, before I get started, I just want to say I thank everybody that watches my videos. And I really want to make a, really want to thank everybody that leaves a comment. I do try to answer all my comments. Some do slip through the cracks, but uh, I do make an effort to uh, answer all my comments. Um, one other thing is from May 10th to May 14th, Amoeba Records is going to give you 20% more on your albums if you want to sell them for trade or uh, cash. You get more if you do it for uh, in-store credit. Um, oh, before I start, let me see, here it is, Trout Mask Replica. Captain B part. Um, I've been listening to this, and you know what? I get it now. It's fucking fantastic. It's one of my favorite B part albums now. Nah, just kidding. It. I. I know the album. It's. If I rated all my B part albums, it's gonna be at the bottom half. Um, I mean, I'll listen to it once in a while. I picked up that copy because it's an original and it's. Darn near perfect, you know? Dumb reason to pick up an album, but I did. Um, recently, Brock P. Dub, he made a video of about record collecting tips and the quest to find new music. And instead of making a video response, I'm just going to throw in a little comment on my history of, you know, how I discovered music. Back in the 60s, it was radio, pretty much, you know. And some songs that they played on the radio, they would play on TV too, but it was basically radio. Um, later on, in the 70s, it was from reading magazines, Rolling Stone. Actually, the Los Angeles Times, when it was a decent paper, they had a really good calendar section. And once you got to know the taste of certain critics, you could kind of... You know, get an idea. Um, in the 80s, it was kind of bands I saw live. Also reading fanzines. Um, more than Rolling Stone. Uh, word of mouth. I heard of some albums that way. And I made a lot of blind buys in the 80s. In the 90s, I didn't buy a lot of records. Um, I did buy some CDs, but I didn't really buy a lot. I went back and bought some from the 90s, but during the 90s, early 90s I did, but as the decade went on, I kind of quit for different reasons. Uh, once I started getting back into it, what, what I did is I bought this. The Rolling Stone Album Guide. I bought this early 2000s, 2001, 2002, and I read this book from front to back, and then when I was finished, I started it over again, and I read the whole thing. I read every single word, and I highlighted albums, as you can see right there, that sounded of interest. Um, by doing that, I got turned on to Amandul, I got turned on to Can, among other bands. Uh, I checked out Pavement because of this, and I did not like Pavement. But uh, yeah, this was very helpful. Um, after this, uh, I would say maybe Record Collector Magazine. But I quit buying that. I, I just didn't find the articles that very well written. And uh, I... Shindig magazine uh, kind of replaced that. I bought, I, I found out about Goat. Found out about uh, Nod. I found out about the Temples. Um, and other bands, you know, I bought mostly CDs still. But, uh, it, yeah, as far as the Temples go, that album, that Record Store Day album, The End, Introspection, the Temples sound a lot like that album, man. There are some songs in that album that just, oh shit, that, 
Uh, now I know where the Tempest got their sound from. But uh, I'm not a real high-tech guy when it comes to, you know, you know, my quest for new music. Um, Sorry State Records is one that I have bought some albums, some records from. And I found out about that from the VC. Um, it was in a comment on one of my videos. Hey, have you ever checked out Sorry State Records website? No. And I did. And I've, I've bought records from them a couple of times. I haven't, still haven't even shown those. Maybe my next video I'll show those. Uh, but the VC is my best source for finding new music. Now, Baraka P. Dub did mention the Soundstage Direct, I believe it was a website. And I did go to there, and it it looks very promising. But the VC is keeping me broke enough, you know, so I, don't, I really don't need any more new sources. Anyways, on to the records. I'm a, enough babbling. Uh, I was downtown to, uh, last week. And I went into the last bookstore. They sell records in there. It's a really cool bookstore. They even have art galleries, artists up on the second floor. But uh, I went there to check out the records. And uh, somebody recognized Vinyl Rich in there. It was the first time anybody's ever recognized Vinyl Richie. And you know, I was looking through and some guy comes up and he goes, Hey, don't you have a YouTube channel? As soon as he said that, I mean, people were like, looking at, who's this, you know? It was pretty fun. It was funny. Gary, I don't know. He's, he's, he said he watches sometimes VC videos, and he did recognize me. So, if you're watching, how you doing? Very cool guy. He actually lives downtown. But anyways, I bought five records there. And we'll start, I'm going to start with the cheapest and go to the most expensive one. And none of them are really all that expensive. First one here is K.D. Lang and the Recliners. What's the name of this thing? Angel with a Lariat. This is her second album. Her first album actually was not released in outside of Canada. I mean, I think maybe recently it's been reissued on a CD and I think a DVD package. But this was her first album released worldwide or whatever and I think it's a fantastic album it's came out in 85 87 I guess her first one maybe came out in 84 or 5 or something like that I don't know I, I'm talking out of my ass this is for me I, it just breathed a fresh it was a fresh uh a breath of fresh air. God damn, I got a dick in my mouth. It was a breath of fresh air, you know, as far as country music. I mean, country music in the 80s, I think, pretty much sucked. This is just, it is so quirky and it's just out of left field. Starts off with Turn Me Round. Great song. Uh, and side one ends with Watch Your Step Polka. Just such a... Just a goofy, corny song, you know, polka beat. It's, I, I just really dig this. Um, her third album, she did three albums with the Recliners. Her third album is probably a better album, but this is, I, I dig this, man. Really dig it. And this is what the inner sleeve looks like. And she's on Sire. Basic Sire. Fantastic. And I picked up her third album. This is her without the recliners. Um, after this, she did make one more album with the recliners. But yeah, this is a... It says the Owen Bradley Sessions, whatever that means. I guess this is Owen Bradley. This is a, more of her as a crooner. It's got some really great songs. Western Skies, Shadowland. Um, I'm down to my last cigarette. Uh, it's 
I, I kind of like the other one better. But she, after she left the recliner, she concentrated more on her singing. She does have a great voice. I mean, I put her... She She's a fantastic singer. This is the inner sleeves. But she's kind of turned into just like a pop crooner almost. And again, on Sire Records, I don't know why I took that out of the sleeve, but I did. But I like her. Uh, I like um, Katie Lang. I have several of her albums on CD. Those are the first two I've ever picked up on vinyl. And for $2.99, why not? Third one I got here is Ty Siegel. Singles number two. This is fantastic, man. This is a fuzzy, lo-fi greatness. I would say every song on here is fantastic with the exception of maybe two. Two or so-so. But, I mean, not bad, dude. Cool insert with $2 bills. It's... It's all songs from his singles, splits, were, and it, it ends with a, a Gigi Allen song, Petting the Dog. What a fantastic way to end this album. Now, Gigi, on Gigi's version, he wasn't petting the dog. He was doing something else with the poor dog. But uh, anyways, he does a really good version. Better than Gigi's, actually. The fourth one I picked up there was an album I've been looking for for a long time. This Monkey's Head. Some people say it's their favorite Monkey's album. and I, The only problem I have with that is it's really not an album, man. It's got three songs on side one. Which, granted, they're all great. And three songs on side two. And they're all... Two are great and one's really good. I mean, so all six songs are really good. Monkey songs. Psychedelic album. But in between the songs, it's got some mumbo-jumbo bullshit. I guess it's clips from the movie. and So, it, it's... It's good, but it's not a great album. I mean, it's only got six songs on it, for crying out loud. I would like to see this. I know they did a Summer of 67, was it? Monkey's reissue recently. I'd like to see them do a reissue of Head with just the songs on side one and put some of their other psychedelic stuff on side two. But, yeah, um, the album cover has got some bubbling here, and it's got a seam split there. But uh, for the price, I think it was $12.99. Um, I, I never find this album in great shape. It's usually got really bad ring wear. And whenever I have seen it a couple of times in really great shape, and they're asking way too much money for it. And uh, very cool. I dig the monkeys. I mean, people kind of cap on them. But I, I dig the monkeys. They, they made some really good albums. The last one I picked up there... PJ Harvey to bring you my love. Fantastic. I was really surprised to see this there. Came out in 95, maybe? Yes, 95. This is her third studio album, her fourth album. She had a an album of demos. Um, came out just before this. This, to me, is her first great album. Her first album... I like the songs on it, but I don't like the way Steve Al Albini uh, mixed her vocals. It, they're way too far down in the mix. The second album he did a little bit better of a job, but this this is fantastic, dude. And uh, this is a a great album. And she made probably three more after that are my four favorite PJ Harvey albums. But this is the first of the bunch, and very surprised to pick this up, man. I mean, 90s vinyl is... You don't see it that often. And this is a promo copy you can see right there. 
what does it say? Promotional copy, not for sale. But it's not a white label. This is the very cool insert there. But uh, it's not white label or anything. It's just the regular labels. But fantastic album. So yeah, I was quite happy with the five albums I picked up at the last bookstore. Um, and I got recognized. That was pretty funny. Here's my last Record Store Day album that I have not shown. Boston Hardcore, 89.91. Supposedly there was 500 of these made. Who knows? It's a... Uh, it came with this sales paper kind of an ad thing just regular labels I've never seen that tang label before black vinyl actually relatively cheap under twenty dollars considering there was only five hundred made I bought this on bull moose apparently there's not a lot of demand for Boston hardcore 89.91. This is a really thrash kind of album. The Welcome to the Destroyer by, Destroyer by Crossface. It even has tinges of heavy metal guitars. And there's one other song that does. But overall, I thought it was a pretty good album. The Wrecking Crew songs I liked. Eye for an Eye. The STP. I. It was a good listen. Glad I got it. Now, that makes Martin Porat, I think that's how you say his name, a chap from England. Uh, he made a video recently and he, he showed a couple albums, you know, VC lookalikes, and he showed one of some guy in the woods thinking about punk rock albums or garage comps he said the guy looked like vinyl richie you know and <laughs> i i thought that was funny and then he showed another one with wes guy from florida another vc guy but uh he made the comment that you know even though he doesn't like the same kind of music or that i do he still likes to watch my videos and I think the reason he made that comment is because of, you know, I do show albums like this. But probably these kind of albums are in the minority of the type of stuff I showed. I just showed uh, K.D. Lang. I showed uh, P.J. Harvey, The Monkees, and Ty Siegel, you know. I actually think me and Martin Perrot have pretty similar tastes. I mean, of course, nobody's going to be exactly the same. I don't know why I went off on that tangent. Oh, I know why. I was recently thinking about a VC member. He used to make videos. I cannot remember his name. He deleted his channel. It was something ferret. Simon Ferret. It, it wasn't Simon Ferret. It started with an S-O, and it was... I don't know. Bar none, he was probably the best VC channel I've ever watched. I hope he's watching this, and he hears me saying that. His channel was fantastic. He he was into the beatnik era. He made a, uh, all kinds of great videos. He lived in London through in the 60s. So, I mean, he had great... He not only had a fantastic record collection of 60s originals, but he had great stories to go along with it, you know? And uh, I think one story was... He used to work at a record store, and I think Bowie... I don't know if it was Bowie. Somebody like that, you know? They, they were looking at records, and they had a bunch of them. They were going up to the register, and... <laughs> the one guy that worked there. The back of the queue's over there, you know. <laughs> but anyways, he made a, a a video of Kaleidoscope. This is the band from L.A. The 
This is the band that, uh, what is his name? Uh, Lindley? David Lindley, was it? Ay, cabron. The guy that plays guitar on... Uh, hey, oh, David Lindley is not on this one. That's why I can't find him. He's the one that played guitar on Jackson Brown albums. David Lindley, yeah. Well, I found this album sealed. As you can see, I just opened it. So I have not heard this. I have heard it online. This is kind of a... And going back to uh, the ferret guy, he, he was talking about Kaleidoscope. And I had only heard one of their albums. And this was back in the 70s, probably when it came out. Or, you know, a few years after, maybe. And I told him, I've only heard that one album, and I didn't like it. And he made the statement that, oh, that's their weakest album of the bunch. So after that, I listened to their first two albums. And, uh, man, they're, they're really good. They broke up after three or four albums. And this, they reformed back in the late 70s. And they made this album. And this is a great, it's kind of country -ish, But, it, man, it is, it's whacked out country. Kaleidoscope. This is what the record looks like. I've only heard bits and pieces of this online. I know the first song on side one, Ghost Rider in the Sky. Fantastic, dude. The, the singer just, just sings in this over-the-top country voice. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, I want to get their first two albums. Side Trips, and I can't remember what the other one is. Something about going to Mars. But yeah, really happy with this one. Next album is a new album. This one obviously was is new, but I did get it in the used section. This one here is Temple of BBV. It's Nod with uh, something from Mars. Radar Man from Mars or some shit like that. Nod and the Radar Man from the Moon. It's a collaboration, and it's kind of weird. This BBV, I guess it's a technique where you can drill a skull, a hole in your skull, to into your brain. And I don't know, you get enlightened or something. I don't know. I've only listened to this once. It just came the other day, and yikes. Really cool looking vinyl on Rocket Records. Yeah, Shindid Magazine did a thing on Rocket Records, and that's how I found out about Nod and uh, Goat. I think Goat now, they release their U.S. stuff on Sub Pop. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I really haven't heard anything by Nod that I don't like. The they do share vocals with the the other band, the Radar Men from the Moon. So, pretty pretty cool album. Looking forward to hearing that more. Now this next, I got three more used ones. This is Aggression on Mystic Records, '80s hardcore punk band, California. I think L.A. Southern California put it. I know for sure. This is fantastic, dude. I didn't realize how good this album was. I had never heard it. I saw it. Picked it up. and f Back in the day, I wasn't a real big fan of Mystic Records. They're kind of getting collectible now. I mean, I have some of their stuff. But they tended to make every band sound the same. And not, not so with this, man. It's fantastic. They even do a... a Foxy Lady by uh, Hendrix. Fantastic, dude. Rich Kid, Jer Dear John Letter. Just really highly recommend this. If you're into hardcore punk, you probably already know Aggression, but it's it blew me away how good it is. And it's on Mystic Records. This next album is not near as good as that last one, but it's cool to have. It's a soundtrack for cruising um al pacino movie from the 80s fantastic movie I, I i really dug this movie 
I did not see it at the theater when it came out, but I did rent the DVD or VHS when it came out. And man, I, I ended up buying it. And it's one that I used to show my friends. and it, It's really cool. It deals with the gay club scene in New York City. And the village, where the village people, you know, you see these cowboys and biker dudes. and Pretty cool. It's basically uh, the movie, there's a serial killer killing gays in uh, New York City. And Al Pacino goes undercover. And he kind of gets into this. I mean, it's a weird, there's some weird scenes in this thing. It kind of blew me away. But I like those kind of movies, the weird shit. And uh, some of the bar scenes are pretty over the top. But yeah, he kind of seemed to get into it a bit. And uh, it's got three Willie DeVille songs. It's got a Lion's Share by the Germs, which is the reason, you know, I got it. I already have that. Lion, I, I have the cruising sessions, you know, every song they recorded for this. But yeah, it's pretty cool. John Hyatt. And it's a white label promo. So for sure I had to get it, you know. Now this last one, completely left turn. Two Life Crew, as nasty as they want to be. Double album. I never was into this band. Um, I have one of their 12 inches um, funk shop and on here it's probably maybe it's not on this album I thought it was oh yeah the fuck shop because this is uh, they had the clean version and then the the dirty version and they used to call it the white people version or you know the black people version. I always like the clean version better of that song. Some of the cussing's just over the top. But uh, yeah, it's got the song Me So Horny. Me So Horny. But I'm going to give it a listen, you know. 80s rap, I think it's pretty cool. And it came with this insert, which kind of, I thought it was real cool. I mean, I don't know how many of these are still intact. You got two live crew uh, merch, and everybody knows that two live crew man they they got the brunt of that uh, that censorship sh stuff back in the eighties. The Tipper Gore, and this is what the Sky Skywalk Luke Skywalker Records, their own record label. Yeah, double album. Yeah. A tipper gore man the, they went after uh, dead kennedys went bankrupt basically because of that shit they really went after this band big time and uh that's why i didn't vote for al gore you know i ended up voting for bush and oh what a nightmare that was anyways take care guys and gals happy vinyls day vinyls richie's here be back in a week or so